Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the mess Lib Dem Ed Davey has himself in over the post office scandal, which is now running the risk of letting a number of Tory MPs off the hook this election. So the party really needs to sort themselves out quite quickly. It has shades of 2015 for me. When voters punished the Lib Dems for something that was ultimately the Tories, and the result was the Tories winning more power. Could do without that grim irony happening this year. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So it's a good job the Tories are so boned that nothing can really save them, isn't it? The post office scandal seems to be causing the Lib Dems, who have been nowhere near power for nearly nine years, to suffer problems. And the beneficiaries will be the Tories, who have been in power throughout that intervening period. It relates to the post office scandal. Now, it's exposed, of course, in no uncertain terms to the public. Nothing in that drama that drew the attention of the public a few weeks ago was, uh, was unknown. It's all been known for several years. This is a public who, because they don't pay attention to politics, may imagine that this is the biggest scandal to hit the country for decades. But it's an actual fact, another one from the pile, which happened to be turned into a compelling drama. When the issue blew up a few weeks ago, any politician involved immediately went to ground and the Tory client media, rather than take a look at every minister involved in the scandal over a great many years across multiple parties, decided to focus in on just one, the current Lib Dem leader, Ed Davey. Now, to be clear, I've said before and I'll say it again, I don't consider any politician to be responsible for the particular scandal. I think there are some politicians who could and should have done more. Maybe Ed Davies is one of them, but he's way down on the, the list for me. You know, it came as a result of a lot of people at or working for the post office deliberately lying, misleading the postmasters, misleading the government and misleading the courts. I've seen no evidence that any minister, whether Labour, Lib Dem or Conservative, ever acted in bad faith here. They were all lied to, and they were lied to by so many people, it's natural to suppose ministers would believe those in charge of the offending system than those accused of theft. There were some who smelled a rat early on, Private Eye, I think, being the most famous, but they have a habit of being sloppy at times with investigative journalism. So the idea of a minister thinking, you know, that they're not necessarily the most reliable makes sense. You could certainly argue, in hindsight, ministers maybe should have put two, to two and two and two together earlier on. But you're really just then accusing them of not being particularly good detectives rather than being in collusion. In fact, if there are any ministers who might deserve a bit of special spotlight, surely it would be the Tory ministers who in the last few years knew the full scale of the injustice. That has been known about since 2019. There are others who think, yes, there were things that you should have drawn your attention to it before then. But in 2019, it became clear, it was obvious, the scandal was, was exposed to the public for anyone paying attention. So any minister from 2019 is way more responsible because they have watched the postmaster struggle. They've now known that they were the victims of an injustice and they've watched them struggle to get compensation. But even then, even those ministers were between a rock and a hard place because the injustice was so deep and so widespread, it affected so many people that the criminal justice system simply couldn't cope. Okay, the Tories also broke our criminal justice system, but in that isolated situation, you could see how it was really difficult to do anything about it. In the end, the Conservatives have recently decided to effectively set aside all the convictions, like just blanket pardons, basically. Now, that's not a good solution because it means politicians are effectively overruling judges. Lawyers have generally agreed that this is the least bad solution under the circumstances because it would take 20 years to go through all the appeals. Uh, you know, these postmasters are now too old. They're going to be dying without having seen their appeals go through. But the legal profession is going to lengths to point out this is not good. This must not set a precedent. We have an independent judiciary. There are influential political forces who want to end that. Jacob Rees-Mogg yesterday again was talking about the fact he wanted to end that. We have to be very, very careful. But despite the fact that no politician is ultimately responsible for the injustice, or at least as it started, 
if any are responsible for not acting quickly enough, surely it would be the Tory ministers since 2019. Yet the spotlight is on someone who was a very junior minister, like the most junior minister you can be, a decade ago, before the courts exposed the corruption behind it all. Now, that is not to say that David did not act unwisely. You know, what's been now reported is he was advised, well, it's been reported a couple of weeks ago, really, but they're now showing greater prominence. He was advised at the time to meet with campaigner Alan Bates. He delayed doing so for several months. He did meet with him, which is more than some ministers did, but he delayed it by several months. That's now looking quite bad in hindsight. You know, is it, but is it really worse to be the minister who, having been convinced the system was fine, from his point of view, remember, he thought the system was fine and he didn't meet someone who he thought was probably a thief. Is that really worse than for ministers who knew that Bates and others had been the victim of an injustice, not doing enough to expedite justice until there was a drama on the telly? Because the way the media are carrying on, you would think so. No attention paid to Vince Cable, also a Lib Dem, but he was the actual Secretary of State in charge at the time. Why is there no focus on him? Because he's no longer in frontline politics. He's no longer a threat to the Tories. No focus on Tory ministers holding the post once the scandal became obvious, whether it's Sajid Javid to Kemi Badnock. Why? Because they're Tories. And there's a reason we refer to Tory client journalists. But this is politics and the Lib Dems need to sort it out. They cannot complain about unfair treatment in the media any more than Labour should. In the wake of the scandal blowing up recently, Ed Davies' personal rating has taken a hit because of the media attention. The Lib Dem voting intention seemed okay to me, but the Lib Dems are also clearly worried. Ed Davies been out this week on an attempt at damage limitation. It has not gone well. He was interviewed by James O'Brien, bit of a disaster. He wasn't able to answer any of the pertinent questions put to him. There was like, like, what preparation did he do for it? For, for an experienced politician, it was a terrible performance. You know, he's been due, apparently, to be interviewed by Laura Kunzberg this weekend. She will not be anywhere near as fair as O'Brien. And according to the New European article on the mess, Davy had said he was only willing to go on the show if she didn't bring up the post office scandal. Amateurish. Because that creates three problems straight away. First, I mean, he's not a Tory, so he doesn't get to dictate the terms of reference with a known Tory asset at the BBC. Second, this is an issue that the Lib Dems need to deal with. They're trying to deal with it. So wouldn't it have made more sense to insist she did bring up the issue so they can put it to bed? Third, well, we've now got reports in outlets like the New European, which at worst is fair and at best sympathetic to the Lib Dems, that, L that Ed Davey is trying to hide from his own past. That's not a good look. I mean, how difficult should it have been to have said, sorry, really early on, right, yeah, uh, you know, I recognise I was one of those ministers who was conned instead of waiting this long to point out and reiterate the fact that, you know, he was lied to consistently from multiple quarters and that had he still been a minister when the truth was exposed, he would have been making sure that not only was justice done for the postmasters, but for those responsible, that he would have been pushing for criminal investigations into those actually responsible. That way he turns the spotlight back onto the Tory ministers who have been in post since the truth came out and emphasise the fact that he was in post, you know, at a time when it was one group's word against another. I don't know how difficult that should have been. Political defence is all about working out a line to take, preferably one that leads the heat-seeking missile to your opponents and sticking to it. And this is now a problem because we may be less than three months away from the general election. I'm looking at the polls and I'm saying, look, the Lib Dems are in the frame to take dozens of extra seats on top of what the polls say at the moment with a real push with tactical voting. The media have the knives out for David. For much of the mainstream media, it's because they're distracting attention from the party which has been in government once the truth became known. What do the Lib Dems do? If they don't deal with this, then they risk more Tory MPs being elected this year than should be the case. Had this happened a year ago and Ed Davey made an arse of it like he is doing, you may have said, well, it may have been wiser to replace Davey. Harsh, because resigning as leader would be effectively an admission of guilt or at least incompetence. I would have had every sympathy for him, 
based on the verifiable facts I have available to me. But it's not a year ago. It's weeks before there's a good chance Sunak calls the election. The Lib Dems are almost in the same position as the Tories are with a leader who may not be an electoral asset that they were hoping for. And the Lib Dems just don't have the time for a messy leadership contest. If they replaced him, it would have to be an overnight job. They, they can't go through the normal system. They'd have to just swap him for someone who has 100% support in the parliamentary party. But even that is tricky. It runs the risk of bringing a lot of bad publicity to the Lib Dems way. Because at the moment, you know, you might have some people who will go, well, you know, David's not really done anything wrong. It's just politics. Uh, or it's not the key issue for them. You replace him, all of a sudden instability in the party, just ahead of the election. Also, what if the replacement leader, you know, Leila Moran would be the most obvious, is not entirely in agreement with David's electoral strategy? That's possible. So she may want to change things. What, a few weeks before a possible election, that would just invite chaos. And what if the Lib Dems do replace David smoothly and the Tory press have a decent attack line ready to go on that replacement? Doesn't matter whether it's a fair one or not. Fatal. You know, what needed to happen to deal with this was for Ed David to have stepped up really early on, faced down the criticisms, turned attention back onto the Tory ministers in more recent years. It's all that needed to happen. He was not the minister in charge when Horizon was set up. He was not the minister in charge when the courts exposed the lies and corruption behind the injustices. I do not know what was difficult about his defence. It should have been within the capabilities of a political leader. But David is making a complete arse of it. I'm, I'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu here. Because in 2015, I remember, the Lib Dems lost a lot of votes because of their support for austerity. You know, they claim they took the edge off it. That is true. If you look at the data, it's absolutely true. Austerity got way worse after 2015. But they still supported austerity and their own voters punished them for it. The result of that was the Tories winning lots of extra seats. It's not like the Lib Dems lost to uh, MPs of a party that, that were anti, or at least of candidates that were anti-austerity. No, they went to the Tories, giving the Tories majority control of Parliament and the government. A cruel feature of our political system that voters didn't want to use their vote to support a party they saw as being partially responsible for austerity in 2015 and ended up not only strengthening the actual party of austerity, which brought in much harsher austerity, but ushering in Brexit as well as a bonus. Politics is, is a very cruel goblin, you know. You have to vote with your head rather than your heart. Our system means those who vote with their heart often get the opposite of what they actually want. I have a terrible feeling the same may happen here. If, if, if the issue does become a topic of conversation for voters in Lib Dem target seats, doesn't matter if it's happening elsewhere in the cities or wherever, but in Lib Dem target seats, if this becomes an issue, it may have the effect of returning more Tory MPs again. The ones who are most responsible. My hope is that any difficulties in the polls right now related to this are not concentrated in Lib Dem areas, Lib Dem areas rather, that in the year of replacing the Tories' people in those areas, again, it doesn't matter if it's elsewhere, it only matters in Lib Dem target seats, if people see the bigger picture and realise that in their own constituency, if they are in one of those target seats, they realise it's a choice between a Tory MP and a Lib Dem MP and realise that the choice should be a no-brainer. In the meantime, Ed David cannot just ignore this because otherwise people will bring it up. If it's a weakness for him, and he's made it a weakness for him, they will bring it up all the way to polling day. He needs to sit down with his team, work out what they're going to do, and then do it, and face it down before it gets worse. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button, and if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships, and until next time, I'll see you later.